Adam Payne here and welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to share some of the results that I've been getting on Pinterest recently for one particular account and then also share some ideas and strategies that I have to potentially grow this account and maybe you'll get value from this video and you can employ these strategies as well. So this is a Japan travel account and if we scroll down we can see that over the last 30 days traffic has been on an upward trend, impressions, engagement, saves and if we come up here to the top click on business hub and go to the analytics overview then we'll see that you know everything is looking good, everything is going up. However it's nowhere near what I want it to be. I would like these outbound clicks to get to you know at least 5,000 per month, ideally more, but we're a long way off the end goal right now. But everything's moving forward, so I can't complain too much. Now, if we go over here, these are the boards that I've got created. I've joined a couple of group boards, but most of these are just you know regular boards. Clearly, some of these boards don't have enough pins, whereas some have quite a lot of pins. So one thing I'll need to do is be more consistent and make sure that these empty boards get filled up with related pins. And in order for me to create more boards and create more pins, I always need to be having places to send these pins to. So I also need to focus on generating content quickly. I've got a link in the description to a free course on what I'm doing to generate content more quickly. And this is helping me with growing this account, but still I need to get more pins up there and you know add more pins as well. Now I'm a firm believer in that success leaves clues. So I've been looking for people that run Pinterest accounts, in this case related to traveling around Japan, that are much bigger than mine and trying to identify what it is that they're doing so that I can then potentially incorporate some of those strategies into my own growth. Now if we come over here, I found this particular account which is one example and we can see that they've got 1.5 million monthly views. They've not got a ton of followers but they've got a lot of monthly views. Now followers, it's a vanity metric. Monthly views is also a vanity metric really but in order to get people clicking to your site you do need to get these numbers up. So if we come down here, one thing I notice is they've got a lot more pins than I have. Now, in fairness, they've also been doing this for much longer than me. They've had their Japan-based Pinterest account for about four and a half years, whereas mine is a baby in comparison. So, you know, you shouldn't get too worried if you find people are doing better than you, but just see what we can actually take from this. So their boards are quite short. You know, the title of the board, I should say, is quite short. Onsen, kimono, architecture, tattoos, koi, origami, Mount Fuji, food. And they do have more further on down that are a bit longer. But when I go to mine, we've got longer, well, like full foliage road trip, um, Japan in winter. We've got come down here. They just seem a little bit more wordy. Not all of them and not doing too bad. Uh, but some of these could be shorter. Rather than saying onsen, I've got onsens hyphen hot springs in Japan. So I'm a bit wordier than they are. So that's one thing I can um, take from them. Now also after going through their content I noticed a couple of things. So if we click on this one for example, best islands to explore, they've got a lot of these images. Now almost all of their images are just photos. They're not images created with a third party platform that have a call to action overlay on them. They're just photos. So if I was to click on this one for example, we can clearly see that this is not an image created by this account. It's taken from Instagram and they've credited the Instagram user. Now because they've put the credit in the description, it's not clickable. If we click this, it actually goes to their website which is on the same topic, 11 best islands to explore in Okinawa. So it is very related but it's not their image. Now they've done this quite a lot and I know a ton of people on Pinterest that do this and almost everybody I know on Pinterest that does this is very successful on Pinterest. Now we could argue about the ethics of this but they are crediting the owner of the image and I'm pretty sure that if the owner of the image didn't like it and requested them to remove it they would do so. So it's obviously not been a problem for them. Very, very short description. So, you know, they've not got too many keywords in here. And I notice a lot of their descriptions are like that. So we could potentially make a better description and incorporate a clearer call to action for people to click through. But in essence, 
what we've seen is just photos, some of which are taken from Instagram. Whereas on my Pinterest account, I have a complete mixture. So if I go back here, you can see I've got ones with you know words on them, text on them. If we click on this one, for example, best places to visit, we've got tons of them in here. I've got these templates that I've used that have got a lot of text that kind of cover the image. So maybe I need to change what I'm doing, or maybe I need to do this, but also do a bit of what they're doing and just have photos. Now I do have some photos on here somewhere, maybe not in this particular one. I've got videos as well, but most of these, as you can see, they've got text on them. And even having the call to action overlay on them isn't actually generating a bunch of clicks. This one got some here, but this was a proper like infographic style image. But a lot of these, this one's got one, but this was a video. So again, success leaves clues. So what I've learned from this particular Pinterest account is that potentially I need to A, have a ton more images, B, I need to have more boards, but have simpler descriptions and titles of my boards. I need to make sure that most of my images are just images and they're not, you know, call to action overlay template style things. And also one thing I've noticed as well, now let's see if I can find one that's got a bunch of pins, this one here, which is one of their main boards. Look, we've got all different sizes. We've got, well, this one does actually have some text on it, but we've got, you know, longer ones, square ones, rectangle ones, all different kinds of images. Now, most people say Pinterest images should be 1500 pixels um, in height and a thousand pixels wide. But we can see that there are tons of these accounts out there that have all sorts of different sizes. And if you go and check out accounts in your niche, I'm pretty sure you will see all different shapes and sizes. The key thing here is just to test. So to end this video, I'm going to say that success does leave clues. And for me to grow my Pinterest account to the kind of size that I want it, I'm going to have to find these clues on related sites and incorporate them with consistency into my Pinterest marketing. I'd like to know your thoughts about this because I personally don't like to use any of the tools out there that use AI to generate images. You've got tons of these tools that will take your blog post and just make a bunch of images. They all look terrible, but people promote them because they get affiliate commissions. I'm not a big fan of those things. I do really like Canva, if truth be told, and I use Canva a lot. I use Canva to create these things, but maybe I should be focusing just on images. Anyway, I'll make another video in a month or two to see how well this is progressing. Until then, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're not done so already, and I'll see you soon. Take care.